Page 22, Cossack Ride. They're introducing at the top of the page new time signature, cut time. Cut time is the C with a line through it. They take common time and they cut it. It's called cut time. It's simply they show the numbers. Instead of 4-4 four, four, it's like 2-2. Two, two. So there's two beats in a measure and you're counting half notes. So if you're counting half notes that means a quarter note gets half a count. Everything just makes it interesting. Most of the time when I approach a piece that's in cut time I temporarily change it to 4-4 four, four time in my head because it's easier for me to count everything. If I, and I, I, All I need is a basic idea of the rhythm. And then I can put it back in cut time after I get to know it. So as I'm discussing this, I'm going to talk about it as though it's in 4-4 four, four time. So we're going to let the quarter notes have a beat. And then later on, we'll put it in cut time. No sharps or flats. It's C major or A minor. Well, look at the end. Bottom of page 23, last measure you hear. That's an A minor chord. I, I'm guessing this is an A minor. Right hand first. And again, I'm doing this in 4-4 four, four time, so it's 1 and 2. That's an A, by the way. You know that's an A, right? 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. The counting they're showing in between the stabs, that's for cut time counting. So, I'm not following that counting right now. We'll do that later. Right now it says 4-4. Four, four. Second line. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. That's the trickiest part of the rhythm of the whole thing. Left hand, you've got these intervals of the fifth for the most part, you A and E. And then you go down one. You need to get to where you can go up and down one key on the keyboard without having to look down to see where you're at. You may have to look at first, but you want to develop that feel for moving up and down one key without having to look. You just know what it feels like. So try and develop that in this piece if you can. I encourage you. And for the most part, that's what the left hand is doing. Now, it doesn't stay in this. Look at the last line. On page 22, you're starting here, and then the next chord later, it's an F. The thumb goes up one, spreading out a little bit. At the top of page 23, the thumb goes up again to a G. You recognize that as an interval of a seventh. And then this nasty looking chord is a D, an E, and a G sharp. They're saying three, two, one. You can do here. There's different ways of fingering this. It's up to you what is comfortable. Just know that immediately without any rest or nothing at the next line you got to go down here. So whatever fingering you're using, be sure and get here on the next line. Now if you're fingering that chord 3, 2, 1 here, your second finger is already on the E. So you can go ahead and just Finger the first chord in the second line, just 5 2 if you want. And then you can go back to 5 1. That works. At the bottom, last line, last two measures, the notes are written here. Three and four. But it has an AVA under it, so you're going to move the left hand down, just the left hand now, down an octave and go to here. Down here for the end of it. Put the hands together, what do we get? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. See, we have rest in the left hand. Oh. One and two. Then in the last line there, it's one and two and three and four and. So the left hand is tied. You just hang on to it. And let up there. One, two, three. We'll tie that down. So follow these tied notes very carefully, and then you get that, add the articulation. The nice light wrist on the art, uh, staccato, and it's an accent there, one and two. 
Now there's no accent on these. The left hand has the accent and the right hand has to hold it down. Two, three, four, one. Two. I'm on the key and I'm pushing down and bouncing off. Then the last line on page 22. Now this is contrast. There's no staccato here. Everything is held down. You have slurs. Lift up before and after each slur. That's just the right hand, of course. One, two. back and add the dynamics. It's loud. That's just the right hand that's loud. Keep the left hand a little sort of loud. Hmm? You're staying loud until the last line on page 22 you come down to moderately soft. That's the right hand. The left hand, yeah. Page 23, you can crescendo up to moderately loud. A little louder. Don't get loud to the second line. And third line down, the coda. It says loud again. Now that's implying that you weren't loud before, which you were, except that you're not going to stay at the same dynamic level all the time. You're going to feel it. You're going to get a little louder and softer as you go along. So at the end of the third line there on page 23 and here down, you might come down to maybe a moderately loud there because you're kind of ending a sentence, a musical phrase, and you kind of come off. But then when you start the coda, make sure it's loud. This can be both hands here. And these are accented here in the half notes. hold the right hand, four counts instead of two, I'm just going to double that, and then they say prepare right hand, well, not a lot of preparing going on, you're simply going to move up to here, just know you got to do it, the left hand's staying here, but it's right hand, and this is soft, so you're coming here, and the decrescendo happens more or less by itself, you're here, then softer, and, and hold on, let the sound die away a little bit. Now you're soft. And then all of a sudden it's loud. And accent on the last note. And staccato. Ooh. If you get an idea of that, then we can go back and, well, at this point we could add the pedal. But it's just overlapping pedal there at 20, page 23 there in the coda. You just push the notes down in the pedal. It's legato pedal just for that line. You lift the pedal up as you play the first notes in the last line. Here, pedal comes up right then because we need to hear the staccato. Now, let's put it in cut time and we're going to feel it in two. So all we do is play a little faster, really. Last line on page 22 is one, two, one, two, one, and two, and one, two, one. So it's just feel it in two. That's all. Well, there's a little thing at the bottom of page 23 about the musical form for this piece. What is it? They give you some options. Which one is it? Well, spoiler alert, we're about to figure it out. You have this at the beginning. That's, that would be A, because it's at the beginning. It's the first one, okay. Then it's repeated, so we have an AA, because they can do that. Uh -huh. So it's AA, so far so good. And then the third line down, you have this. That's different, so that would be B. So we do that. And then on page 23, second line, we're back to this. Well, that's A again. So now we got A, A, B, A. 
Okay. And then we jump down the fourth line down. They've labeled it Coda. So it's like A-A-B-A -A -A Coda. This is how I'm saying it. So it was one of those that. If it's so, we've got it. If not, I probably screwed up and who knows what's going on. I'd like to play this slowly with you. And we are going to do the repeat there on, the, on page 22. Mm -hmm. And I will go ahead and pedal this. I'll show it in the play with me. It's just a simple legato pedal technique. So I'll give us four quarter note counts and then let's come in. We're going to take this slowly. I'm going to kind of take it in four, as in four four time, because I, I want to check and make sure we have all the right notes and the rhythm correctly at a slow pace is all. One, two, ready, go. Two, three, four. 